Hi, this is Professor Triplett, and in this series of videos, we're going to start talking about how to learn Maya and just some of the different parts of Maya. But how to learn it is the most important thing. Uh, there's a lot of documentation on Maya. So if you come up to the help files here and you just go ahead and hit Autodesk Help Maya, what will happen is, and this happened off screen, so I'll pull it in, is that um, my web browser gets launched and it takes me into uh, the help files for Maya, which is all online based. So now that I'm in here, let's say I want to work uh, or with some part of Maya, like the attribute editor, and I need to know what is the attribute editor. So let's go ahead and just search that. Okay, now I'm looking along here. There's kind of a lot of stuff here, but I see one that just says attribute editor. So I'm going to go ahead and look that up. All right, so it's giving me where you can find the attribute editor, um, multiple ways to get into it. Uh, it tells me the attribute editor lists attributes on a selected object. Tab across the top, the attribute editor lets you select nodes connected at, uh, to the show node. Okay, so we're going to talk about what all that stuff means because it kind of sounds uh, funky. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into Maya and we can talk about it more. But th this is really, if you look at this, like if you want to know about the attribute editor, it's really not that long. Um, so a lot of the help files are like this. Like you can just read like one little page and it helps you understand. Now, sometimes it's like a foreign language because you're learning something new. And just like uh, if you were in the medical field, you know, they're going to be talking all these terms. And at first you're going to, you're going to get lost. But uh, eventually you'll pick up on the terms and, and you'll understand. So you kind of just got to bear with it for now. Um, let's go ahead and just make a cube. And I'm going to go into my uh, my channel box and I'll just go ahead and change this to 100 so we can see it better. And let's turn off the grid. And if I hit Control A, it'll bring me back to my attribute editor. You can also get to your attribute editor uh, other ways. So we're in our uh, channel box here, I can hit this button up on the right top. Okay, that's attribute editor. Um, I can hit this button right here to hide it or bring it out. And the other one was Windows General Editor's attribute editor. Okay, so any of those will bring you the attribute editor. Okay, so now we've got, um, we've got this cube here. And along top here, we have a few different, what we would call nodes. Uh, and these are like pieces of information that describe and define this cube. So everything in here is connected to um, this cube shape, okay? So um, let's go ahead and just take a look here. So for instance, the transform attributes. So where your translate, rotate, scale are, that's all uh, right here in your attribute editor. You can look at your pivots, you can look at your rotate pivot or your scale pivot. Now we're not seeing them right now because we, we have to turn on wireframe and then we can see those pivots. Okay, um, you know, um, there's all kinds of settings in here. Uh, world space pivot, local space pivot. Uh, some of the stuff we're probably not gonna be using that much right now. Um, display, like you can actually turn the visibility off. Uh, so I, I just hit five on my keyboard to get the shading back. Um, and I hit four for wireframe. So um, so this is so this particular the P cube node that ties into this, uh, or P cube one, uh, that's the information that's just in this one little node. And there's basically the, the people who you know programmed Maya scripted in certain information that would be defined by, by P cube one. Um, and then if you come over here, there's a bunch of other information that defines P-cube, um, or actually this would be P-cube shape, uh, but they're all making up the same object, of course. So um, what we might use out of here is, let's go ahead and look at uh, render stats. So um, sometimes if I wanna make like this box into a room, uh, what I want to do is I actually want to see the inside of the room, not the outside, right? Um, but to do that, I have to do a couple steps. I have to go to Mesh Display, and then while I have my objects selected, I need to reverse the normals. Now, you're going to see it turns black, and um, basically the reason why it's turning black is this is Maya's way of letting us know which direction the normals are going. So. 
um, at first the normals were going uh, perpendicular off the surfaces uh, going outwards and now they're going perpendicular off the surfaces going inwards and it's letting us know this is the back side but if I turn off this double sided now I can see inside of here and so now you can see like this could be like a little room and you put you know items in there and stuff like that and this would be a way to um, start arranging you know a room and it could be your outer walls okay so this is an area in the attribute editor where this is one thing I particularly use sometimes if you're rendering you don't want it to cast shadows um, sometimes when it's rendering uh, you want to turn off the, the visibility of certain objects um, and there's a lot of that kind of stuff in here but we're just gonna the double sided is enough for now um, objects display this too has an object display you can turn it off and on uh, and then there's just some other stuff in here that we're not going to get into right now now um, up here I don't know if you noticed but this polynormal got added to this list here now this was not here originally but when I went ahead and did the mesh display reverse what it did is it added a little piece of script um, that is modifying this surface so it just reverses reverse the normals 180 degrees and if I come over to my channel box you'll see that there's this polynormal right here and it says normal mode reverse so that's what it was doing and this is now what's called a piece of history okay and in Maya um, typically as you go along you end up deleting your history out unless it's something a piece of history you need for instance if you're rigging you have to keep the rigging history in there it's what defines how the, the skin is attached and, and the bones and stuff like that. So, um, or I should say really more, when I say rigging, I should say skinning. When you're skinning, you have to keep it. But for a model, eventually you're gonna wanna delete this kind of stuff off, uh, these kind of um, histories off. So I, I, at some point, would go ahead and go edit, delete by type, history. And then you can see this thing, that piece of history just disappeared. So now it's basically like the normals are, are just set as going in and it's kind of baked into it now. And if I wanted to reverse it again, I'd have to come up here and just put another reverse on it. And that would do the opposite and reverse it. So let's go back to our attribute editor. So I'm just gonna click on this little guy. And you'll see now that that, that uh, polynormal is gone. And then we only have two more to talk about up here. For this cube and one of them this is the um, shading group this has to do with rendering um, and you can see that it has redshift Arnold these are the, your different renderers that, that we can render with uh, in Maya uh, redshift is not in here by normal you have to download that um, they have a free version but it does leave uh, watermarks on your renders but if if you want to look into it please do um, the it, so it's just important to know why this is here this is here so that if I hit the render button, Maya already, like it's making it convenient that it already has a, basically like a piece of script that will send the surface to the renderer so that I can see it rendered, basically. And then the other thing too is that you also have to have surface quality. So this Lambert is what we would call a shader or a material. And this is connected to the box. And so this is what defines how this surface is going to look when it's rendered or when it's in the viewport. So um, like for instance, I can go ahead and just, you know, change this to, apparently it didn't change, there we go. Change it to like yellow. So that's a terrible, ugly yellow. Let's change it to something like that, that's better. Okay, so um, that's basically uh, defining, you know, surface color and there's all kinds of other stuff to get into with materials. But for right now, we're just gonna we're just uh, acknowledging that it's there. So um, basically, uh, this is the attribute editor in a nutshell. <clears throat> Depending on what you're doing, there's gonna be different settings in there, but this is gonna kind of be your area where you're gonna look at all the different things that are connected to this, and if there's history, it's gonna be up here, and you can even sometimes tweak some of the history while it's up here, but beware, because sometimes they, you get bad things that happen when you tweak history. Um, anyway. So uh, that's, that's one major part of the interface that's important to know, and that's the attribute editor.